Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, we are going to continue the generative AI on cloud series. And in this video, I'm going to probably discuss about the Gen AI project lifecycle. Now, since you already know that we are definitely going to develop a lot of applications specifically in cloud from the basic data ingestion till the deployment. So it is very much necessary that you actually understand a generic workflow of the Gen AI project lifecycle. So let me quickly go ahead and let me go ahead and write some amazing things for you in this particular uh, notebook. And I will be explaining you completely step by step how you can probably see or follow a project lifecycle. And uh, as we go ahead, there will be a lot many things that will be coming like LLM ops platform. Uh, and uh, we will be working specifically with Azure uh, AI Studio, AWS SageMaker Studio and all. So definitely both the clouds will get covered. So before I go ahead, please make sure that you keep the like target of all this kind of videos till thousand that will definitely motivate me. And I've been exploring many more things so that you get the right kind of guidance and knowledge. So let me go ahead and let me start the Gen AI project lifecycle. Uh, with respect to this Gen AI project lifecycle, I would like to make this entire lifecycle into four to five steps. Okay. The first step that is nothing but here I'm just going to write over here. It is basically defining the use case. Okay. So what kind of use case are you solving? Then this use cases can be a rag application, can be a text summarization application, can be a chat bot. So based on different, different use cases that actually depends on your requirements, your company requirements. So this is the first step. You really need to define the use case that you're specifically doing. Now, with respect to this particular use case, we usually take this entire module into the scope part. Okay. So this is basically my scope, right? If I basically use a generic term. Now, once you define a use case, you let's say that I am going to probably develop a RAG application in that I'm going to definitely use vector databases. I may have a lot of PDF files. I also need to probably convert that into a vectors and store it in some kind of vector store DB. So some kind of use case you really need to define and all the requirements that is required in that particular use case. Coming to the next step, coming to the next step, which is super important because this steps will be involving two important things. Okay. And that is nothing but choosing, choosing the right model. Okay. The right model. When I say choosing the right model <clears throat> here, they are two different things that you can probably split this into one, whether you are using or you are probably using some kind of foundation models. So here I'm going to probably write whether you are using foundation model and solving a use case. So this is the one category that I would like to divide this particular model into. The other category is that whether you want to build your own custom LLM, right? Custom LLM. Now see, there are two things over here, right? When I say foundation model, Foundation models are already those larger models like OpenAI, Llama 2, Llama 3, right? You have Google Gemini Pro. So these all are very huge foundation models. And for, for most of the generic use cases, you can directly use those kind of foundation models and you can solve the use case itself, right? Now, with respect to this foundation models, we can also further go ahead and do fine tuning, right? So let's say I have a fine, uh, I have a foundation model, which I am specifically using to solve my business use cases. On top of that, if I really want to make this foundation model behave well for my own custom data, then what I can do on top of this foundation model, I can use LoRa, Clora techniques, and I can probably fine tune all these kind of models. Okay. So this is one of the step. The second step, the second step that I've written over here is custom LLM. Custom LLM is nothing but it is building your LLM from scratch building your LLM from scratch, from scratch, right? And obviously, uh, this one, there's a lot of benefit also, if a company is building an LLM model completely from scratch for this specific use cases, but a lot of resources will definitely be required. We have to really take care of model hallucination, many things and all as we go ahead. 
but yes uh, i've also seen many many companies developing their own custom llm model okay so choosing the right model or what kind of models you are specifically using to solve this particular use cases that becomes the second important module with respect to this gen ai project life cycle and obviously i've spoken about foundation models both in aws you have in google you have in microsoft azure you have currently microsoft azure have ai studio specifically have all the access of open ai services uh, obviously it is investing a huge amount of money over there okay now once you probably select the right kind of model there are main three tasks that you probably do for going forward okay so main three task okay the first task is nothing but you can specifically use prompt engineering and solve a use case prompt engineering and solve a use case the second task that you actually can do is nothing but fine tuning right fine tuning fine tuning so with the help of fine tuning also you can probably develop your own custom llm model and on top of that you can basically do it let's say you're completely creating your llm model from scratch one more important mechanism that you have is nothing but uh, aligning uh, or you can probably say training with human feedback training with human feedback and this is one of the very important step that is actually used while you're training your llm models how a llm model is basically trained i've already created a video in my playlist uh, with respect to the lang chain and all generative ai playlist you can probably go ahead over there fine tuning how to specifically do fine tuning and all uh, that also i have actually shown you the, the reason why i am showing you this generative ai project life cycle because tomorrow when i am probably creating videos uh, or let's say in the upcoming videos when i am creating videos related to aws series over there you'll be seeing all this particular steps going ahead okay now once you probably do all the steps uh, the further step is something called as evaluation okay evaluation is basically seeing that how your model is performing by performing all these particular steps there are also different different performance metrics which we are probably going to follow okay these two steps i would like to combine and uh, say something like this okay so i'll say probably adapt and align models okay so this will be the specific model that uh, we specifically use for this purpose now over here your model will be ready everything is perfect uh you are able to solve the use cases let's say your performance metrics is increasing over here so your metrics is specifically increasing and it is saying that now your model is ready now it comes to the deployment part right so with respect to the deployment part i would uh, definitely say deployment uh further you also need to do a lot of integration with different different applications so i will probably say application integration okay application integration and here uh, what we do we specifically perform two major step one we optimize models okay uh i'll just write optimize and deploy models optimize and deploy models okay and this deployment is specifically done for inferencing okay and here is where most of your cloud platforms here is where your llm ops llm ops is used you know different different inferencing techniques are there one technique uh, i have already covered with respect to a platform which is called as grok right it uses a inferencing technique which is called as lpu so it is always good idea that you should definitely know multiple ways of inferencing see at the end of the day whatever models you specifically create unless and until the inferencing is not fast you definitely cannot use those things right so it is very much necessary that you know the idea of this module extensively because tomorrow building all these things is very easy fine tuning is very easy right you definitely have a template a framework a data set preparation and all and you can perform this particular step so that is the reason in this series of videos you'll be seeing that how much i will be focusing on this llm of um, uh, llm ops platform right and i will also show you multiple platforms like which can definitely make your inferencing very much good so this is the most important thing here uh, definitely will be using aws azure right you can use all these things gcp and we'll see what all services they have specifically provided probably for the inferencing purpose again but initially our focus will definitely be on aws
ओके देन द सेकेंड स्टेप आफ्टर वी डू द डिप्लॉयमेंट इन द एप्लीकेशन इंटीग्रेशन वॉट वी डू नेक्स्ट इज दैट वी बिल्ड एल एल एम पावर्ड एप्लीकेशन एल एल एम पावर्ड एप्लीकेशन पावर्ड एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज योर इंटीग्रेशन इज डन योर एपीआई इज क्रिएटेड नाउ इट्स ऑल हाउ वेल यू कैन एक्चुअली बिल्ड द सोल्यूशन यू कैन सॉल्व डिफरेंट डिफरेंट यूज केसेज एंड ऑल सो दिस ओवरऑल गिव्स अ ब्रीफ आइडिया अबाउट द इंटायर जेन ए आई प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल since uh, we have already started this generative ai on cloud so this is necessary to know and uh, you should probably follow all the steps and whenever i create any videos with respect to gen ai on aws all the steps will be considered in mind and it will be shown to you so i hope you like this particular video this was it from my side i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one all please make sure that you hit like share with all your friends i'll see you all in the next video thank you take care bye bye